That is absolutely right, Tyler. I'm joined now by Bobby Kodak, the CEO of Activision Blizzard, the gaming giant, Robert Kraft, CEO of the Kraft Group, as well as the New England Patriots, as well as Jeff Wilpon. He's the co-founder of Sterling VC, a big VC fund in the sports entertainment space, as well, of course, as COO of the New York Mets. Guys, thank you all so much for joining us here today. You two are of the, two of the seven new team owners for the Activision game Overwatch. Um, so a big move for you guys into esports and a big move for Activision to create this new league. Why was it so important for you to bring in two sports owners from the traditional sports business? Well, when we created Overwatch at Blizzard, it was always with the expectation that we would be able to celebrate and recognize our players in a way that would be consistent with traditional sports. And so the only way you really could accomplish that would be to have the very best traditional sports team owners participate in ownership in the league, along with all of these great entrepreneurs from esports. And that's what we've done. Now, Robert, you reportedly paid about $20 million for the rights to a team. That's what these team rights are going for, from what I understand. What is the long-term potential you see in creating a team in Boston? Well. We, we looked at it as a, we try to think long term with everything we do and we've seen that there are 30 million people already involved with Overwatch. Uh, we hear that 60,000 people in Korea go into a stadium and watch two people play. We see in the NFL that uh, the millennials and the Z generation they're consuming things differently through their mobile device. They're playing games hours and hours a day and not watching sports the way we did. So we wanted to go with the best and try to participate in what's happening in this whole new field. But do you think the potential is really about building this into a live events business in, in Boston, like the way you have the, the Pats play there? Uh, we do. We see it as a great opportunity. And, and what I like about it more than anything is that it's a way to connect globally. You know, we think the NFL is the best sports entertainment product, but it's basically in the U.S., Mexico, Canada, England. But here's something that has a global appeal, and we think we have some business skills, just like I know Jeff's organization does, where we can take that and take advantage of that to get a global audience. Jeff, coming from the New York Mets, why did it make sense for you to make this big move into esports? Well, we had been looking at it for a while with the VC fund, and we sort of skirted around it in the periphery, looked at a couple teams, uh, made a couple investments in uh, some companies that do work within esports, but never had the real opportunity to buy a team like this. And knowing Bobby for as long as I, I do, and knowing how committed he, Activision Blizzard, is in this space, it really made sense to, to come in. And obviously, with people like the Crafts involved, it just gave a, a good feeling to this, and, and we're looking to to make a good run of it. There have been esports teams in the past, and what's interesting for me as an outsider, it seems like each of the games that they're playing is kind of like a different sport, the way you have the NBA, NFL, you know, Major League Baseball. Why did you choose to go with Overwatch as, as opposed to one of the other teams that's out there? I think basically because of the structure Bobby put together with his team, uh, you know, that there's going to be a sharing of revenues from the, from the central point, which we don't have in baseball as much. Uh, you know, some of the other sports do. I thought that was a great model to be able to really grow this. And, and you know, in five, ten years, the franchise values should be quite a bit more than they are today. And Bobby, this is the first time esports teams have been done on a city by city basis. Why did you want to make it city oriented? So we thought the most important thing in celebrating our players was getting local recognition and developing that local bond that fans have with their teams in their local markets. But it's never been done on a global basis. So the idea that Shanghai and Seoul can play Boston and New York, uh, that's never been done before. You know, there are national uh, competitions in soccer, but this is the first time where you've had global competition, city-based pairs, where you're going to have that local level enthusiasm. And that was really important for building and growing Overwatch as a league. And if you've now officially sold seven teams, I've heard the numbers around $20 million a team. How many teams will there be total? And are you talking to some of the other CEOs down here about buying teams? Well, we haven't announced the number of teams that will be total in the league just yet. 
but today we're focused on the first seven and two of the very best owners that we possibly could attract. And I think what we've been able to do is build an enormous amount of demand and interest in every city that we've been participating uh, in the process through. And uh, today is a really extraordinary day because it will give us the opportunity to really recognize the over 30 million Overwatch players for the commitment that they make to the game. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.